project might be in the works. It is in the works. It is in the works. Yeah. Ah, exclusive, baby. <laughs> okay, so what kind of project do you have? What kind of music genre are you going into? And have you been recording songs already? For genre, it will be more like soft pop, pop rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you, you have recorded some songs. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Welcome, welcome you and all to another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast, where we talk about, say with me, Latino everything. Thank you very much for being here on another amazing episode. If you are liking what the what we are putting out, content, stories, please go ahead and subscribe right now. It's very important. It's for free. Unless you're paying subscription, and I don't know what you're doing. So that's on you. That's on you. That's nothing new with us. So yeah, go ahead and uh, subscribe. Today we have an amazing episode because we have a very young professional that's been doing her thing for some time and she has an amazing story to tell. We have a realtor agent uh, that works out of the DFW area for on-demand realty. And again, the way that I met her is very interesting. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Melissa Ornelas, you can find her on social media at Real with Mel. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Ay, excelente. Gracias a Dios y usted. Excelente. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. So real quick, brief story. I know we talked about it. So I was uh, out and about. Uh, at my, I had an accident. I had an accident. I had no car. I called an Uber. Your dad, I don't know if he does it on the side. He picked me up and we started talking about it. He was telling me about, you know, maybe I can get him on the podcast. And he said, you know, you got to talk to my daughter and my daughter. And just I'm like, okay, cool. That was a year ago. Yeah. Fast forward. Now we connected. And I didn't realize how much, how amazing your story is yeah. as being so young that you are, the things that you already accomplished and already done. So thank you for being here. Thank you. I feel very grateful to be here. Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to start with a segment that I like to call Preguntas al Chile. If you have seen the segment. Preguntas al Chile. I've seen other people do it. We started it about three years ago or so, you know what I mean? And we keep switching it up so y'all don't want to copy. Because if y'all do, please let us know what's up. Lista? Lista. Estás lista. Tacos sí. o tortas. Tacos. Corn tortilla or flour tortilla. Corn all the way. Gorditas or pupusas. Pupusas. All the way. También. <laughs> También. What is your favorite place here in the DFW area for pupusas, in your opinion? Ooh. At, off of Arapaho. Uh huh. A seventy-five. Se llama. Sabor sal salvadoreño. Sabor salvadoreño sí. has the best, to you, your opinion, your palate, the best pupusas yes. in the DFW. Yes. Very, Carlos, you need very to try delicious. it out. Delicious. Good service, good food, las mejores pupusas. Oh, really? Free plug in. Okay. Plátanos con crema Ooh. y frijoles or pastelitos de pollo. Plátanos con crema. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to put you on a pickle here. Tamales de pollo salvadoreños or tamales mexicanos. <laughs> Ay, uh, tamales mexicanos. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, you're going to get in trouble with that I one. I know. But... <laughs> Sorry. What is it? Okay, because they're both, again. We're both not, great. Both great. But what is it about the particular mexicano tamale that you like more? Mm, I just love the... I grew up more on the eating more tamales mexicanos. So yeah. I just like, my palate just accepts that. It's like, I can eat more of those. Verdes or rojos? Los dos. Los dos? Yeah, los dos. One of each. One of one, dos. Or one of one, dos. One of dos. Right? Okay. Uh, Mexican coca or jarrito? Mm, jarrito. De qué sabor? What flavor? De naranja. Naranja. Okay. Agua de horchata, jamaica, tamarindo. Jamaica. Yeah. Salsa verde, salsa roja. Salsa verde. Salsa verde, yeah, team. Salsa okay. verde. Verde. Churros or flan? Flan. Nice. Valentina, tapatio, cholula, or tabasco, hot sauce? Valentina. And conchitas, the pastries, the pink ones, the white ones, or the brown ones? Mm. 
The white ones. The white ones? Yeah. Nice. You're the first one, I think, in a long time to pick the white ones. It's usually the pinks or chocolate. 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 I like the white ones. <laughs> like the OGs. Yeah. I can. This is way different than any other ones. It's got nothing to do with the food. But we like to entertain. Just for entertainment purposes, a good conspiracy. A conspiracy theory that you heard one time from somebody, either their social media or somebody told you that when you heard it, you're like, that's got to be true. It's really, it's a strong possibility that could be true. What would that be? A conspiracy theory? Yes. Any conspiracy theory? Any of them that you heard and you'd be like, that could be real. That could be a real thing. Like something that has happened and it's, yeah. okay. Uh, so there's a cave in my pueblo in Mexico mm -hmm. that they say if you go there, well, there's gold there apparently, that if you go there, you never come out. In Jalisco. In Jalisco. Wow. So I told my family, like, let's grab hands and try to just go in there. <laughs> but they're too scared. Like, apparently no one ever has come out. Once they go in, you, can, you, you don't come out. Speaking of conspiracy, what if it's a portal? Supposedly there's portals all over the world. Ooh. Bermuda Triangle apparently is one, other places. Mm -hmm. So what if it's something like that? I don't know. So I've they never... say there's ghosts too? No. No? I don't believe in ghosts. You don't believe in? I believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. I do believe in spirits, and but not ghosts, not like haunting ghosts, like, like like boo. Okay, so okay, okay, I got it. So what if this spirit were some kind of type of ghost? You know, different variation of a spirit. Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't put the word ghost in okay. it. I wouldn't okay. do that. Why? Why does it? Does it? This, you, there's like that stigma with the word ghosts. Like, you oh, think of evil and bad and stuff like that, right? Or they're out to do something. But uh, I do feel like spirit's something more that you feel you feel the energy, but not that they're in act of doing something. I got you. Okay. So when you hear the word Latino, Latina, or Latinx, what is the first thing that comes to mind to, for you? My community. Your community? Yes. Awesome. I, yes. Do you consider yourself Latina? You... Do you mind if any calls you, anybody calls you Latina? Do you prefer Salvadorian, Mexicana, both, human? I I'm not I'm not here to to criticize on someone to tell me like oh you're I'm not here to say oh you're wrong I'm not only Mexican I'm not only Salvadorian I'm both yes but I'm proud of being both mm -hmm. so if they just acknowledge me or just say oh she's Mexican I will also I'm Salvadorian too but nothing in a way of like. You are wrong. So I'm proud of being both. I'm proud of being Latina. Yes. Yeah. What is the what is the, uh, the the term of endearment that you use for somebody that's Salvadorian and, and Mexican? Is there a word? Salva Mexi or Mexi Salva? It's, it's, I haven't. I don't know no? one. I don't know one. I just mm -hmm. like Salvi. Salvi. Salvi Mexican. Salvi Mexican. Mexican. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Shout out to my Salvadoreños. Yeah. Much love to y'all. Y'all's food. Y'all's. I was telling her. I was watching the video on my way over here. How y'all have like. I know so little about a lot of the countries in Latin America, mm -hmm. the Caribbeans, but whenever I have a guest that's from another place, it just, it doesn't forcibly do it, but it makes me want to go ahead and tap into what's going on. Yes. So it turns out Salvador has, the which you have Salvador, you have Mexican, has 100 something volcanoes, 20 something are active. Mm -hmm. They have waterfalls, they have amazing lakes, they have some of the best surfing waves in the world. Yes. Yeah. And right now they're doing a whole lot better as far as the whole country because of the new president mm -hmm. that is uh, cleaning up, has been cleaning up for years. And, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming a place to go check out because it's beautiful. Yes. Have yeah. you ever been? Yes. I, I recently went in January. Awesome. And I tried surfing because they had the surf, the surf tournament over there. Yeah. And it is, the waves are sh way stronger than what you could think. I tried, I mean, I took the surfboard out there and then I reconsidered going out there because of how strong the waves are. Some surfers out there were actually in the waves and wow. they looked, they looked phenomenal. It looked like a movie. Like, Do you know how to surf though? I don't. No. I, <laughs> you gave it a go. You gave it a go. I tried. I mean, I, yeah. I wanted to put myself out there. You know how to swim? Like yeah, strong swimmer? Yeah, I could swim, but it, the waves are so strong. You can't really swim in those wow. waves. Uh, it's beautiful out there. Oh, right now, there's a lot of tourism, so they're really trying to encourage more tourists to go and visit and get to know El Salvador, get to know who we are, get to know our food, our culture, yeah. the beauty of El Salvador. The crime rate has gone down. They're no longer on the top, 
18 of crimes in um, the states. Yeah. And they're, they've really improved and cleaned up their El Salvador. So anybody who's considering it, I highly recommend it. It's beautiful. It's tropical where I was at. It's You can get a little mixture of both. We have the mountains. We have the, yeah. the ocean. We have the city. So it's a mixture of everything. And it's just somewhere that everyone needs to go visit. What area were you in? Well, I went to San Salvador and then I went to La Libertad, which is where I had family living. Mm -hmm. So I was over there where El Tunco is. Yeah. It's like very, very famous place for surfing. So when I went there, I actually heard more English and Spanish. Really? Yes. I heard, I met people from from Australia. Wow. Like people that were visiting just because they've heard El Salvador was beautiful. Yeah. And they've just been traveling, trying to find new places around the world. And everyone's going there from all different countries. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's amazing. Because again, if it wasn't because you were going to be here and try to educate myself more in the country, I would realize how freaking beautiful it is too. Shout out to Bolivia too, because I didn't know how good and yeah. beautiful they were. But man, yeah. Salvador has got his own little hidden treasures, amazing uh, scenery, the people. I think we were talking about it before we started recording that. I think maybe it was more of like people are so friendly, right? But I think they're always like that. It's just because of the way that it was before with crime and everything. You always have mm -hmm. to be on the defense, have to be cautious and yeah. have to be maybe even live in fear. It doesn't make you want to show how nice or how amazing how caring you are because you always have to be guarded yes because uh, you don't ever know what's going to happen yes no yeah, yes and that's that's something that over time they're going to have to over we all will overcome yeah um i mean 30 years ago they they thought that it was going to be cleaned up and so they thought it was going to be new change in the late 90s and then it didn't happen yeah. so they had false hope so now there's a bunch of salvadorans who were fearful they still had false hope like is this really going to happen but it is happening yeah. the last five years have changed so much for yeah. El Salvador yeah. yeah and uh the president Bukele, Naib Bukele. Naib, yeah, he's doing an amazing job and with a 90 something 94 you said of uh the high the 90s yeah he's <laughs> like oh the voting on the last election is kind of hard to deny that the man is popular there and you know loved very loved, loved very admired loved. A lot of women's they're like, that's my boyfriend and that's my husband. Just because they ha they look up to him so much yeah, that they've yeah. made such a difference for their families. Yeah. And the like I met when I was out there, I met so many families that they just told me stories of their past. Yeah. I mean, they they still live there, but the fact that now they have an opportunity to start a business. Yeah. Without having fear of the crime. Somebody shaking them down for some money. So, yeah. you know, or the food or the food or everything. So know? now they're like, no, we're going to make, you know, and there's just so many, there's so much optimism and hope and they, they're a country of faith, mm -hmm. very faith driven. And so they put God Salvador, first, which is the savior translation. Yes. yes. So, so it's, it, I mean, they put God first and that's something that I do believe that they, they're on the right path. That's cool. Yeah. So you sense that all that when you were there walking around all that hope yeah. of the optimism and everything yes i i walked around by myself yeah no one no one to to be my bodyguard i was like let, let me get to know who these people are and i introduced myself to random people i rode a horse i just i wanted to, to get to know the community and yeah. see who who lives here what do they do what what brings them joy you know how do they talk to people and yeah. so i just put myself out there i had no fear i met a little boy who you know sell it was his birthday selling bracelets right oh, that's cool. so it's like there's just op there's just times where it's like i'm at the right place at the right time and i was yeah. i was there at the right time what was a common factor of things that everybody touched up on whenever you were talking to them what was the thing that kept coming up like whether it be hope whether it be anything just in conversation with them they just kept coming up over and over and over what would that be well i just felt so much gratitude mm -hmm. so much gratitude from every single person i met they felt so grateful to have had a conversation just with one another each one of us that it it's memorable yeah. having even small moments they can be moments you remember forever yeah that's dope that's dope all right so let's start with your a little bit of your of uh, who you are yeah so you're half salvadorian half mexican have your father your mexican father ever told you how is it that he got to the states by any chance Oof. yes well I couldn't remember right now at the top of my head how he did, but mm -hmm. I do know he came when he was around like 12, 13. Yeah. From Jalisco. From Jalisco. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And he came very young and started very making his, his, his American dream happen to him. Yes. And he started getting to where I believe he's also into real estate or yes. doing things. What about your mom from El Salvador? How, how was her journey over here? To it state? was really tough. Really? Really tough to get over here. She was also very young and okay. coming here to look to have an opportunity for a good education, for a better future. And Somebody from El Salvador that has to ca- cross many borders to get here, can you, did she ever tell you a little bit more in, de- like more in detail how was her journey over? Yeah. Can you, not to get too personal, can you share a little bit of the things that she had to go through, the struggles? Well, first off, I mean, everybody's trying to get in at the same time. Right. So the fact that there's, let's say, 50 people in a 10 by 10, you're crammed with each other and you're all like you're not even thinking of the fact that you're you have strangers surrounded by you as a little child right but that's something that they were all there for the same mission for a better future so that's part of you know part of her journey to get here um being surrounded by strangers as a little girl to get here and and not knowing if she wasn't gonna make it but really praying and hoping that she was and it wasn't easy at all it took her it took her a long time and it was scary it was it was frightening for her and it's something i know that's that she carries with her yeah how old was she when she got here she was 14 14 years old now did she come with herself or the or family with herself. her too? by herself mm-hmm. did she ever tell you why she wanted to make the journey was it of course you're always looking for a better life uh you know american dream that gets sold to us but what why did she decide to make the, the journey over being well, so young her mom came first mm. Her mom was already here. Okay. So, yeah, she was raised by her, her grandma. Mm. And so she came to, to because my grandma came, my grandma, her mom came first to, to be able to establish, get a home first here. Yeah. So when she got here, she would have somewhere to, safe to be. Yeah. And that, that's how she was able to actually have a home when she got here. So was it here in the Dallas area where they landed it? No, California. California. Mm-hmm. And you were born? California. You were born in California. Yes. What what area specifically? In Van Nuys. What is it? Van Nuys. Van Nuys. Yes. And where what is it? South Cal? North Cal? It's it's Central? called the Valley. Ah, the Valley. valley. So you were south. Yeah. Was it to south. Mexico? No, not not, not, so much? not so much. Not so That's cool. Yeah. So I'm from California. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember when you moved to Texas? How old were you? Oh gosh, my little valley. I, when you asked me, I was like, "Yeah, I think because that's the valley, right?" Yeah. yeah but yeah. valley, valley girls. They got a valley, like, Texas too. Well, we have yeah, but valley girls from California oh, say totally, like totally, yeah, like yeah. 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 But totally, <laughs> yeah, I they get. say totally a lot, but we say totally. And I moved to Texas when I was turning five. You were turning five, five years, years old. old. Yes. Wow. Do you remember any of that? Moving here? No, I remember. The first time I had Chick Fil A here, moving here, we it was a great experience. I really love Texas. I mean, those my core memories started here in Texas. Yeah, but I do have some some memories from my childhood in California. But I will say, Texas has been my home since cool. yeah since growing up. Got the boots on too, by the way, representing. Yeah, boots. Shout out to South Cal girls and yeah. the Valley girls, but yeah. uh, yeah, y'all lost a great one. <laughs> Just uh-huh. kidding. So, uh, <laughs> did you did it ever dawn on you that you were you were growing up with different cultures. You had the Mexican and Salvadorian cultures at all whatsoever. Or when did it come to mind at all that you were like, not necessarily different, but you actually had two cultures growing up. And maybe one of these days you realize, oh my God, I'm either I'm Mexican and I'm Salvadorian. Anything that ever happened yeah. to you like that? Yeah. And I actually do think it happened recently. Really? Yeah. Yes. It was because growing up, I was like, I'm, I'm Hispanic. Like, that's all I knew. I was like, I'm yeah. Hispanic. I speak Spanish. Like, and I, I grew up in a city called Plano, Plano, right? So yeah. over there, it's, we, there's cliques, you know, there's cliques in schools and all of that. And I just, I couldn't find like my right place to fit in. Mm-hmm. But all I wanted to do is be around like the, we, the, the kids or people who we had like similar interests in, like with nature, with exploring outside yeah. or, and I got, I didn't really hang out with, you know, my Spanish speaking friends as much when I was younger. Really? And that's something I, I wish I did because I know, and I felt that when I was younger too, I was like, I wish I had more Spanish speaking friends. Mm. I wish I did. And I didn't where I grew up in my area, nobody spoke Spanish. So later on down the line, I, I tried, I actually put effort to make more friends and embrace being Latina. And that was like more in high school. 
and now now that I'm in my 20s I've I've met so many more people mm-hmm. that and so much experience in what's going on with El Salvador right there's so much um orgullo pride and being Salvadoran right yeah. now yeah. and that's something that now I feel and I've met so many people and I've experienced it and going to El Salvador I do feel like there's a difference because I I visited Mexico so much growing up. Mm-hmm. I didn't visit El Salvador so mm-hmm. much. But now I I feel like there's a part of me that I'd never got to see and and get to acknowledge growing up right. which is a Salvadoran side right. because of how the crime was and everything. And but now it's something that I I still constantly educating myself on and want to continue to know more about that side of myself do you think there was kind of like a negative stigma towards the salvadorian people at that time because of everything you kept hearing you know gangs whatever the case might be uh, even though it wasn't yeah. it wasn't in the salvador it was here but still kind of like negative talk about the people from El salvador slightly mm-hmm. because of all the things that they saw on, on the news or whatever the case might be yeah and i, I yes yes and And depending where you go, you know, there's different type of mindsets on El Salvador. Mm-hmm. You know, you can meet a whole group of families that are so proud of being Salvadoran. And then you can meet another that aren't. So it's just like yeah. you, you know, and you come from depending on your environment. And like for mine, my mother had the bad, ex- like her journey here was really difficult for her. So remembering El Salvador was difficult for her. So that wasn't something that she was like, Let me share with you about my experience. Oh, wow. Compared to my my father constantly taking me, you know, every year growing up, and I loved it. I love I love the mountains in Mexico and it's family. I mean, my mother's one of my mother's only child and my dad's mm-hmm. one of 11. Wow. So there's like a whole completely different background and t- what to share on your experiences from where they come from. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, imagine like having to leave everything behind and i mean and and not and it's just things that happen in life right because you want to but at the same time when you come for something that just wasn't that nice to express it and carry it on to your child maybe it's not the easiest thing to say because your maybe your experience wasn't the best ever mm-hmm. but it doesn't define the fact that now salvador is doing amazing and people are being proud to be a salvador from el salvador salvadoreños mm-hmm. so that's pretty cool okay so you had something happen to you that uh I'm going to share a little bit. So you had a little bit of an accident. You were in high school, uh, getting ready to graduate. You had a, yeah. a senior trip. You had a little bit of an accident. Yeah. And I'm only talking about it because <clears throat> you have a story on uh, IG of how you became, how you got into real estate, right? Yeah. So you got into an accident. You had a knee and unfortunately you you had to get surgery on it. Yeah. So you were, I don't know if you were bedridden, but your, both of your knees were not, you, you had a, Needless. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. I just had to. <laughs> Funny <laughs> joke. But, uh, issues with your knees, and then so you, as you were recovering, you started studying uh, on your licensing as correct. far as your real estate, real estate license, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Take me back a little bit to that journey. How it happened, the story, and how who brought up the subject of becoming a realtor? Okay, so it's the year 2020. I'm about to graduate high school, and We ended up not having graduation. So my friends and I were like, let's set, still at least plan an outdoor trip where it's still, we can still be able to do something and right. enjoy our, our graduation to celebrate ourselves. We've mm-hmm. worked really hard. So we plan a trip to go to, to go hiking in Oklahoma. And it's just a group of us. I actually drove like three of my friends and then my other, nice. it was like two cars. We took mm-hmm. two cars. So I had three friends with me, drove us there the first day that we're there. I jump off a rock while we're hiking and then I, I land on the ground. I couldn't get up anymore. It was like my whole entire knee just completely swelled up. Ouch. I'm limping and that was the end of my trip, really. Everyone else got to go hiking, but I didn't. And later on, I, had, I drove us back home still mm-hmm. with my knee like that. Ouch. Yeah. And long story. Thank God we got home safe. But we did get home safe and... I was just pushing through. I didn't want I didn't want to have to go to the doctor. I'm like, this is going to pass. It's it's nothing that's not going to affect me. I didn't want it to be reality that I was going to be extremely injured. Mm-hmm. So I I rested, hoping that it would go away. It didn't go away. 
so I went to the doctor like four weeks later in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And he, he told me, Melissa, you have torn your, your ACL. Ouch. Your meniscus is extremely damaged. Ouch. And you should be crying right now. Everyone that's come in here that has had the same situation as you has been bawling their eyes out. So you're a warrior. And that's, that's true. And I felt that. And I was like, okay. That, that kind of made me feel better that I wasn't crying. So I'm like, yeah, I am tougher than what I thought too. So I ended up having my surgery two weeks later. And that recovery was six weeks. So once I had that surgery, mm -hmm. I had to stay in Mexico, have my physical therapy. And I was in bed. I was in bed in crutches. I did use a wheelchair for a bit for like the first few days. Was that the time that they transfer one of the, the things from one knee to the other at the same time? Or that was a different That time? was the second surgery. Like second surgery. So the first surgery was just one knee. Mm -hmm. The second surgery a year later was double knees. Double knees. Yes. And so the first time I, I was all I, I mean, I had those six weeks to be able to study online. I'm very passionate about educating myself as much as possible mm -hmm. and constantly learning. Right. So in Mexico, my father was there and we do have family who's in real estate. So he's like, well, you know what? Why don't you consider, mm -hmm. consider starting your real estate courses online? You have right. some time. It's online. So I was like, okay, you know, what? I, I want to educate myself. I want to help people mm -hmm. and let's go for it. Right. So I started and by the time it was like, I was able to come back to the U.S. I was able to pass my exams, get my fingerprints. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds simple, but it was, I was so, I mean, thankful that I was able to have that time, you know, to be able to focus so much on my right. courses and pass in. So by the time I got back, I signed up with Remax. Yeah. So did you have any jobs prior to that at all whatsoever? Were you, were you ever worked at anywhere else besides that? Or yes. was that your first job? No, I did. I did work. I started at 15. I worked at a restaurant. And then after that, I did a side business. So after school, after high school, mm -hmm. after hours, I would do eyelashes on my friends and on my teachers. Really? So I had a little side. Yeah, I had a little entrepreneur. Entrepreneur spirit yeah. from the beginning. Yes. And wow. I would have like back to back to back clients. Because I was like, I was pretty, I'm efficient. With you had to be good. Otherwise, they yes. wouldn't have back to back clients. Yes. That were jacked up looking like, I don't know what, they probably yeah. wouldn't come to you. Yes. So that lasted for some time. And then after yes. that, you just, that's she, when you, yeah. senior came? I did that. And then I, I was a sales manager at Aldo, the shoe store. Oh, yeah. So, and that was at like 17. So 17, 18, I was yeah. a, a, like a manager. That's cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Very driven. Yes. Okay, so you... Thank you so much for being here today and checking out this amazing episode. Make sure you go and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment and a like. And now back to the episode. The uh, tell me a little bit about the situation with uh, 2020. You're one of the first ones that I know that, unfortunately, with the COVID, your graduation experience got taken away. Do you feel like slightly you were robbed, or was there any kind of blessing in disguise that that had to happen to you? You eventually graduated, right? But not like everybody else did. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I definitely feel like it was, there's a, a balance between the, the experiences that were taken that I wasn't able to have and share with others. Right. But I also do know there's a blessing behind everything. So in the, the robbed part, I do feel like there was moments where I wasn't able to say my goodbyes or say my farewells to my friends that, you know, we may never see each other again. And we didn't even have the choice to, to say goodbye. Right. Right. So right. there's people that, that are in our lives where we could have had still an opportunity to become closer than than we were before. Right. And there's just th that's what I do feel like I was robbed on, which is the the time that we could have shared. But the blessings I do know that there's some people who maybe wouldn't have graduated or wouldn't have been able to to start their their journey if they didn't have the opportunity to graduate that year or have right. that that hope there. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And then they, you did say they did get to do something for you all uh, to not necessarily walk, but kind of sort of compensate for that. Can you tell me about that part? Yes. So they emailed us and said, what time slot works best for you and your family? 
And it was like a five minute time slot to mm-hmm. walk the stage. So they had a group of like 20 students. Not even, I don't even think it was 20. I think it was like five, 10 students and their families. But it, it felt like a lot because it was like the COVID time. We're all wearing masks. And we walked the stage and my family was behind me in a little box. And they said my name. I walked the stage and that was it. They That's just cool. recorded like 10 seconds. Melissa Arnelas walks the stage on to the next. Next person, next appointment. <laughs> next and, appointment. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you graduate, you you get your license, you're done. And then, of course, you get your first job, Remax, and mm-hmm. uh, you start working. How was it for the first year for you as far as just figuring it out? The one thing is getting your license, but the other is getting out there on the road, uh, showing houses, setting up appointments, whatever the case might be. You're still kind of sort of learning on the job. Yes. And, but still, how does that go for you in the first year? Yeah, my first year was tough. Yeah. My first year was definitely like all the time people were questioning my age. They were just like, I mean, the they just saw me as like a young girl who wasn't super sure on her real estate. Do you look really young at that time still? How old were you when you first started with them? 18. 18? I mean, I was 18. And you look very young? Yeah. I mean, I also think it's about knowing your your, edu- your education. It wasn't really until my... It, I, I helped family my first few months. But then, like, on the seventh month, I finally got my first deal. It was, like, 700000 So that was a great a great deal. Uh, but it was it was a referral from mm-hmm. a, another state, out-of-state client. And that really, sh- it that helped me build my confidence a lot because I put in a lot of effort to be able to help that family and find their, their home. Okay. And, yeah. So you start with family first. Yeah. Is that how it goes just to make sure you get it going? Is the family yeah. okay with that? Yeah. Well, family was like, they were supportive of it. They were like, well, at least we have someone that we trust already that's in the business. So at first it was, you know, kind of getting the the reins on the horse right so you're i'm educating myself i i got my gri license which is a graduate real estate institution Mm -hmm. i've i did so many hours of education but it's also about that that confidence that self-confidence that i feel like i've gained over time through being in the business and just growing as a woman and that my first year was more of like hey okay this is i'm i'm figuring out what i'm doing and i'm here and my my heart is pure and i know what i'm doing but it was still like the lack of confidence at that time my first year yeah. well, mostly the experience i would experience. guess right because you kind of sort of i heard what was it a clip of confidence is like latin for with faith so having faith still leading you because you know that you pass the test you know that you have this you don't know but your heart is pure like you said i like that so much that you want to help people the mm-hmm. right way you don't want to just put them whatever and you know you just keep pushing but the first deal that you get seven hundred thousand. how how did how did they find you how did they know about you you said it was a referral yes of who a remax agent from uh-huh. colorado who is relocating and trying to find a house with land and my broker was like, let me help you. This is, I'm going to set, I'm going to set you up with this, with this client and you go ahead. I drove like 2000 miles for that client. You did? Yes. We Where, drove, what area? Oh, all everywhere. We drove through mineral wells. We drove Okay. To, so you showed different properties as we were talking oh, yeah. about different stops yes, before we, they found one. Yeah. We drove, they were somewhere 45 to two hours away from each other. And we started at 9 a.m. We didn't finish until it was dark. So, multiple days yes two weeks consecutively two weeks consecutively, consecutively. Jeez, every single day it. yes yeah and we just drove drove and i negotiated a, a good deal for them they ended up getting 32 acres in a God, beautiful house that's a lot that's quite and a bit of land I, i'm still in contact with them and that's they're cool. still like i feel very like we still feel very connected so well. finally you're driving them what is it the, can you sense when you look at them, that this is the one, yes. this is the house. You you saw their eyes, yes, it's like a little sprinkle. Well, it's not only that, but it's also the, I mean, it's a lot of storytelling, you know, yeah. so that that you can hear their lifestyle being spoken onto the home. They're like, well, we can go kayaking here. Oh, we can have our family reunions here. We can do th- this activity here. Well, oh, our kids are gonna be. I'm going to call my kids from downstairs over here. 
like that's where you can you can feel that instead yeah. of like instead of just talking characteristics on the house they're talking on what they will be doing in the house already like, already they visualize sold. themselves but whenever they start doing that you already know it's sold yeah because whenever you're showing them another one's like no they can't talk to us from the balcony no we can't do that no this yeah. you already know it's like nope let's yeah. go let's wrap it up so oh. and sometimes <laughs> i know before they do that really? it's like yeah you can hear it i can feel it ah. i just like because once you already like they've already told you or you've already seen maybe like a few houses and they tell you okay well you know what i I really need this. This is so important to me. Or I don't need this. You, I'm like, okay, they really want to see this house, but there's something I just don't, I don't feel like that's the one for them. Yeah. And then the moment they, we walk the house at the end, they're like, no, Melissa, like that, like the house, it looked good in the pictures, but it's not for me. Like, mm. I don't say I told you so, but in my head, I'm like, I knew, but I'm giving them the opportunity because if they want to see it and that's, they feel like this might be the one, let's yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah, that's true too. Okay, so get to the closing table. You you work out a good deal. Get to the closing table. They signed, and it's all done. I uh, a lot of agents that I know nowadays prepare like oh. packages and stuff like that. What yes. did you have in mind to prepare? Because I, I know you probably had that even before you had your first deal. You okay. had thought about this is what I'm gonna do for my client once they're done. Yes, I'm. I'm like I love to give gifts. I really do. And so I create baskets for my clients and. Just kind of hearing on what they what they like, what if they like a certain drink, or if they do baking, or just if they're it's a new house, new couple, new home, some necessities. So I I always I really do go all out on my my gift basket. I like the fact that you are active listening to where even though they're just sharing stories and like that sharing story part, but also like do they like to bake? Do they like carpentry? Whatever the case yeah. may be, you already got it. And the gift, I'm guessing it's more special because it's more customized to the things that they like yes so whenever they get to see it they'll be like oh my god this is exactly what yes. i need." Mean. Ah. yes and i've also done where if it's if i have a closing like at lunchtime i'll bring lunch to closing so i'll bring like some pizzas or that way we're and we'll eat while they're signing so it's more relaxed because yeah. it's a big it can be a big deal a big a transaction it's right the biggest so purchase, one of the biggest purchases in your life so you can't do that empty stomach yeah so. yeah Get some tacos, some something, some pizza, tacos, whatever you want. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, so you get the hang of it the first, not all the way, but you're more. Mm -hmm. uh, people are, are referencing, are referring you now. They're uh, looking for you. And then, how long do you stay with Remax for? I was there when three years. Yeah. What was the biggest lesson that you took away from being there, and, and of course, learning? But what else? Loyalty. Yeah. Loyalty, law treating your clients to the best of your abilities it's not about yourself it is always about the client it is always and always putting that client first and following the laws you never ever ever want to break any rules to protect them and yourself yeah and always and staying loyal staying loyal to your client that's one thing i've learned uh, where i was at it was very family oriented i'm family oriented so it was really beautiful to to meet other people who who put their family first i do feel like that's a really important factor yeah so you decide to uh go to on-demand real team yeah uh, shortly after yeah what was it that you know brought you there what did you see what did you kind of sort of i know you're very you listen a lot you I'm sure you do some research um what, what brought you wanted to be part of that part of on demand being joining on demand was to find a place for me to grow to mm -hmm. the next level for me to be able to excel and to meet other hungry agents as well to to be a part of not only a brokerage who has been around for so long and so established which helped me gain clients being a part of established company but at this point i've already have had my clients i'm getting referrals i'm meeting a lot of people through online mm -hmm. through my experience on demand is very tech savvy they're very on demand we're known as being realtors who are yeah. actually going to be answering your con your texts the same day like not we're not going to respond to you the next day we're going to respond to you when we're on our phone i see your text i'm going to get to you and just a really good um, social media marketing that they have very good support accountability it's a very young high energy very high energy um, brokerage yeah so you felt for you I know Remax was great and everything, yes. but you felt you, maybe you were a little bit capping. You wanted to keep spanning your wings and go somewhere where they might be able to push you yes. there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How did you find them? Did they, or did they find you? 
So I I was actually recommended. They were some people, other agents told me, "Hey, check them out. They're really good. They look like they're blowing up." And I have a friend who she's actually a part of on demand already. Oh, nice. So I spoke with her personally and she told me that this has been the best experience for her and I truthfully it's it's been a really great experience since. Yeah. So, yeah. Was even though you, how long you've been with them so far? About two months. Two months? Yeah. So even though you've been there a very short time, you've already seen everything they got going on so yes. far. The biggest thing that you have taken away that is just like, yes, this is where I need to be right now. I, I love the accountability. I love how there's just constant communication between us. We have group chats between us. If there's any question I have, I mean, my broker's always there to answer. If not, we have a group chat between all 150 agents. Imagine mm. that. So if, if I ask a question about, is there any land appraisers nearby? I'll get like 10 messages that same day about different people they recommend. So it's more of a personal connection mm. on referrals of who, who, who we can connect with, get some quotes on, and people we know that are like us that work the same way. So you network as far as within the team of on demand is a whole lot more. More. Um, involved we're more we're we're actually online okay yes all right that's great that's great yeah, yeah. because <clears throat> you don't like to send a text and two days later three days later or email and you just don't get no reply yeah. from nobody yes. you know just, no. that could slow you down or that could really be the deciding factor of somebody that is looking for a home that has another agent because sometimes you know customers will shop but the other one moves faster than you and you know there goes there goes that deal i've I've been getting a lot of those recently. There's yeah. a lot of agents right now who aren't answering their clients' texts. So I'm, they're coming to me now. They're like, I mean, yeah. and they give them the ultimatum. Hey, if you don't text me back or call me back, I have to move on. Okay. And they move on. So you are really good at getting on, on, being on top of the clients yes. whenever they communicate because you know that that, not that you like jump high, high but it's more like, you really want to cater to the client's needs to make sure that they are taken care of. Make sure, this, like as we talked earlier, one of the biggest purchases they're going to make in their life. They want to be, they're going to be curious. They're going to have questions. They're always going to be. And then it's great that they can rely on you to be able to, I don't know where your hours are, but it's cool that you can text them within a short amount of time. Yes. You'll be able to give them an answer, be able to give them a, hey, a let, me, let me get with you real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah. No, I mean, it's one of the biggest investments. And if, and if you don't have someone or you, I feel like it's really important if you have, a thousand questions you need you need to get as many questions answered as possible you don't want to be moving forward with anything if you doubt something so you want to help them understand the process as much as possible yeah. when they're purchasing or selling their home that way they they know what what it's going to look like okay so for you i know we, we asked this before from a different realtor shout out to chris and Contreras. uh however for you i know it's kind of sort of dissimilar but what is your approach as far as anybody looking for a home what are some of the first steps that you get to do with them the first few minutes of the conversation uh as far as guiding them through the purchasing of a home let's say the first time buyer absolutely so i always want to know exactly what their idea is on what they want to purchase i want to know a little bit more about who they are and what their goals are in their home buying journey and then once i i hear that i get some background of their goals who they are i i direct them to a list of my preferred lenders or if they have a lender we are going to work hand in hand to make sure that they get ready for their pre-approval okay so you're looking for that golden ticket that that Kristen told me about that's the golden ticket to start looking into homes because otherwise yeah. you're wasting their time and they're wasting not necessarily your time but kind of it is a waste of time because you're not going to go anywhere if you don't really know that you will be are able to and, within your budget able yeah. to go and start shopping and looking at homes and i and i say and i tell my clients hey we're going to find your home. And if we don't have that pre-approval, it can't be yours. We can't make it yours. We can't put an offer without that pre-approval. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a complete offer without that pre-approval. So let's work on it. So that way, when we find your home, it's, it, you're ready. You can, you can make it yours. So on demand for where you're at, let's say somebody's not there yet. They go and they're not pre-approved. Mm -hmm. You just like move them away and no. forget about them? Or what is it that you have to be able to put them in place to yeah. maybe two, three months later, they can of revisit course. with you and see if maybe they can get the pre-approval? Yeah, not everybody's ready right, right away. Most mm -hmm. most people aren't. 
Um, so it's a plan to success. It's a plan that we uh, we're able to help you to get you ready for for your goals. So if it's not now, maybe it's six months, maybe it's even a year or two years down the line. Down the line, if you haven't done your taxes and we need two years, it'll be two years from now. So it's if you're not ready now, it's okay. We'll make sure we help you get ready. Okay. So what is that conversation like with somebody that didn't get a pre-approved whenever they get to talk to you? Do you call them? Do they tell you hey, they're not going to make it? Do they call you and say, we got we just weren't able to be there yet? So how, how's that conversation well, like sometimes? Well, we, everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. That just means that right now is not, not, not just the t right time yet, but it will be soon. So let's just make sure we get everything in order. That way, when, when we have everything in order, you will be able to, st we'll be able to start searching for your home. So even though they're not immediately something that you're going to uh, do, put them in a home, is there, do you have and dedicate time for people of like that, that maybe they're not ready, that you can revisit either maybe once a week, once a month to see how they're doing and yes. where they're at? Yes, I do. And, and I, that's where we work hand in hand with the lender, because if it's due to credit or due to debts, we overlook that. And I check in with them monthly to make sure how's, how's it going? How's your, are you, do, are you on time with everything? Yeah. And that we, we reflect on everything to make sure we are on track. Okay. That way, once we are, we're ready to go. That's awesome. And we, before we started recording, you talked about whenever you get other people, you're getting some uh, out-of-state people, they're yeah. investing. Yes. But I like the way your approach as far as, like, the homes that you're showing. Most of the things is via phone. But you put yourself in, if you was to buy that home, mm -hmm. would somebody else buy that home? Where did that come from? Why do you want to feel that way? Of course, it's only obvious, right? But where did that come from? Why the idea of just starting to do that to make sure that whenever the investor gets the house, whoever gets the house, they're going to be happy with what they got? I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like we're all, we're all, the, we're all the same. We're all the same. Yeah. So I'm going to look out for you as much as if it were to be myself. If would I live here, would, would this be something I would be comfortable with? So I, that I get asked as well is this do you like this and i i will say hey yeah. at the end of the, it's their decision on what they yeah. want they want to invest in yeah. but if if they're asking me a personal question i will i will say yes or hey maybe i checked this out let's you like the other one as well yeah. you know so let's overlook let's look at that one again and and i i just put myself in their shoes because i do feel like it's important to care for them more than than ourselves first mm-hmm yeah. I like that. I like that selfless service. A lot of the military, you have that selfless service, which is cool. A lot of the things you have, are you would have been great in the military uh, if you was to join. You. But unfortunately, <clears throat> that didn't happen. But the integrity and uh, selfless service, things of those natures, there are some of the core, basic things that you have to do in the military. So, okay, so tell me the biggest lesson that you took away from one of the toughest closings the toughest purchase the toughest client that you had how was it that you were able to handle first of all you, you do, seem like you do very well as far as somebody that's outrage angry for whatever reason you know things happen within closings mm -hmm. within whatever uh, but sometimes it's not your fault but yeah. you can't really they don't see it that way they see it because you're the one that you're talking they're been talking to that not all the way your fault but it's kind of your fault right mm -hmm. so what is the toughest client for that reason and how is it what is, did you learn and how did you go about it to make sure either they got taken care of or unfortunately was something that they weren't able to do at that time so you know most of my deals thankfully they've all just been once we get ready and we are at the closing table everything's gone perfectly smoothly i had one that wasn't able to close on time and my client was going to go out of town that same night after closing and we weren't able to close. And he was like, I'm so sorry, Melissa, because the closing was at like 1 p.m. And we're still outside. Like, we're still trying to close and it's 5 o'clock and we're not signing. And it was due to like one loan condition, right? That ended <laughs> up coming up. So, I mean, that can happen. And the loan condition came up. And it was something that it, they were just going back and forth, back and forth, trying to find a solution. But that's where I'm like, you know what? This is patience. I mean, patience kicks in. And I, I'm like, I have nowhere, like I, my client is here. That's my priority. My priority is to make sure that we close, right? That he closes yeah. on his property and I'm here to support him as well, emotionally as well. Cause he started to get frustrated and felt very, I mean, 
not not dissatisfied, but he felt very. Um, I feel like he was almost embarrassed because he wasn't. They were they were trying to find a good term between him and the loan, and he's like, "I'm sorry, I'm wasting your time." And I'm like, "This is not a waste of time. It's just a process. Mm-hmm. It's just a process. So every problem has a solution. I'm very a big believer on that, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get angry at people." If there's a problem, we're just going to, we got to find a solution. Where does that mentality come from from you? Because not everybody has the patience, that understanding of everything has a solution. Some people just get blocked out and it is what it is and move on. I That mentality comes from not conforming to the world and actually wanting to be the one that to find, to lead instead of just being a victim. Honestly, I really, I'm a big believer in we can victimize ourselves or we can or we can lead ourselves. We are our biggest fan or our biggest critic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. So you have to do an amendment to the contract because you didn't close on time. Get yeah. that done. And then finally, when he came back from his trip, were you able to close finally? We closed the next day. But the he, next he was day. actually out of state at that point. So we got a, remote, a mobile, a mobile notary, notary yeah. out of state. And everything worked well. Everything really like. I ended up getting to spend more time with my client. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> How was he after that? Uh, was he oh, happy? Very happy. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're very happy. I spoke with him just the other day. He's ready to buy another property. That's cool. So you do you keep up often with a lot of your clients yes. after you're closed? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I, that's really important to me because I'm not here just for a transaction. I'm here for a lifelong, a lifelong relationship to mm-hmm. be able to. One day your children buy a house. I would love to be able to be a part of that as well since I got to help them have their own bedroom at one point, you know, and then one day they're going to have their own house. Your eyes, kind of like when they find their home, you get a little eyes shine, whatever you think about that process, if it was to get to that point mm-hmm. and you're able to put their kids into a home. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yes. Okay. So as far as real estate for you, uh, What's like the biggest lesson for you as far as just doing it? You know, I know it's rewarding because you get to go and see the emotions, the uh, feeling of having something accomplished for them, for the client. But what else have you learned within doing mortgage or doing uh, real estate as far as you that you have learned? I know there's patience. I know that. But what else? Mm. Patience. And communication. I feel like communication is one of the biggest key factors in in working in real estate. Under communicating will definitely set you behind. Yeah. So communicating over communicating is better, and and being truthful, honest, loyal, just being an all well round honest individual, mm-hmm. and and being able to not only do it in real estate, but also outside of real estate to carry that in business and outside of business. That's pretty cool. All righty. So the, uh, you used to, you tried out for a notary. It just didn't work out for you. <laughs> you gave it a go and yeah. it's just not your thing. There's, I mean, I have a lot of passions and I, you know, I wanted to dedicate my other time yeah. to, so to other activities. That wasn't one of the things that made you passionate about. However, you do, I found videos of you yeah. singing. Yeah. You, when did you start singing? When did you begin to know that you could sing? And I know that you, you dove a little bit in it. You got your feet wet on it, but not all the way. How did that come about? The music thing that you do that my people might not know about it, but I know. So it actually comes back all the way to when I was about four years old. Mm. And I, I, my grandma would put me to sleep and she would sing me a lullaby. And she would tell me, Meli, ya duermete. Because I would sing with her. <laughs> yeah. I would like, no, I want to sing with you. I wanna... And she could tell, duermete, ya, ya te tienes que dormir. You have to go to sleep. And I just wanted to keep singing with her. Yeah. So I was just singing. I, my parents bought me like a little guitar. And so I can just, you play, play? I played. I played. Yeah, I played yeah. somewhat. I nice. got some basics down, guitar, piano. That's cool. And when I was nine years old, I auditioned for a competition and singing competition i did not win what was the name <laughs> of it it was for a company called gano excel uh-huh. a multi-level yeah. company and my family was a part of and i didn't win but i i mean i was nine years old i put myself out there i sang el rancho grande mm-hmm. 
Do you know that one? Oh, yeah, in the Rancho Grande. Oh, yeah, I, am baby. Baby. Yeah. I can't sing like you, but yes, only. I sang that song, and I remember I actually forgot the words, so I just sang it over and over. <laughs> just the same words. The just same loop words, it. yeah. It's, it's, I mean, you were nine, you I got was nervous. Nine. I was nine, and I put myself out there. Mm. And that's all that I care about because I pushed myself and I faced my fear. It was 500 people there. Were you, sh- were you shy prior to that? Were you somebody that didn't like to do that, put themselves Public speaking is one of the biggest fears of people. Correct. Some people even, I don't know if it's true or not, but some people rather just die than public yeah. speak yeah. and get in front of people and say something. Yeah. So so to be able to get in front for your first time in front of, of course, I'm sure you've done it in front of family, mm-hmm. but 500 people, Yeah. man. Yeah. How did that feel? There's something in my mindset that's like, I'm scared or I'm like, I'm nervous to do this. But that makes me want to do it. Yeah. That makes me want to do it. Like, I'm just like, I don't want my own thoughts to limit myself. So if I have a, a desire to do something, but I'm just scared, I'm not going to have fear. Like, I, I, I may be nervous, but that fear, it's only going to stay there if and continue to be there if I don't do anything about it. So I, I do things that help me face my fears. Yeah. When was the last time you did something that's scary to you that you still did it? Oh, the last thing I did, well, changing brokerages was, I mean, a big decision because it's my first career and making a big change. But I know it's looking out for myself is a big, the most important thing. I need to put myself, what's going to be good for me, myself, my family, my clients. Biggest fear, I I don't know. I wouldn't, I mean... I started singing again in front of real estate uh, peers. So nice. I sang the national anthem at the last event where we had around 250 people. So I got, I, I'm, I'm getting back out there again. I'm doing my singing. Yeah. But okay. So you were nine years old was the first time, but then you kept doing it a little bit more yeah. over and over. You got to do more stuff. You other competitions and you got yeah. to, what other one was it that you did? I auditioned for La Banda, American Idol. And I also auditioned for The X Factor. I've just done so many, like, so So you were in it, in it. Uh, Yeah, like, I mean, that was, the only way I could live is if I would sing, like. But there was a little bit of a distaste as far as the music industry goes because you're, like you said earlier, as far as finding a solution and not being confined to a box, you just didn't like that they wanted to shape you a certain way for you. I acknowledge the fact that and it took me time to acknowledge that, that the industry, the music industry, people want what they want. They want, they want to hear and see what they, they believe is going to be the next hit or the most attractive or the most appealing for yeah. the eye, the ear. And to me, I, I, music was a way to express, to mm-hmm. connect, and to be able to to relate with others and with through emotion, through my voice and through the stories, the right. storytelling that I, I sing through. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that, that to me wasn't my goal. It wasn't to, to have fame. It was more to just connect with people through my voice and through my singing and through my story. Yeah. So that kind of deterred you a little bit to, de- when did you completely stop? Like you used to be even choir. Yes. You did choir and everything, but you, when did you come like, put a pause on that yes. was that when you started real estate yes. or yeah when so, i started real estate so that like that's why like i'm telling you now it's like you're singing again in front of my real estate peers like no one knew i sang like <laughs> like even my broker everyone comes up to me they're like that was you that's that was you oh my gosh i didn't we, we didn't know we knew a singer in our lives like and, and i'm like yeah you know i'm like it's been behind the scenes and i yeah i do it sometimes you know yeah. just nothing just i sing something. for fun so just a little something yeah and and like back in the day like it was something that i did as like a, a job as well like singing for for quinceaneras birthdays with bands and it was small gigs but you got paid though i got paid you got paid i got paid yeah but it it just you know wasn't and at the same time obviously not everything in life is what we want to do right but i i know that Willingly, I'll be able to to one day sing or maybe share some of my own songs. Okay, so that is in the back burner. Not maybe not the back burner. It's getting more closer to the front burner as far as thinking of yeah. doing something. Of yeah. course, you know you're doing your thing. 
money's coming in. Yeah. You have the money now to be able to play a little bit more. So a project might be in the works. It is in the works. It is in the works. Yeah. Ah, exclusive, <laughs> baby. Okay, so what kind of project do you have? What kind of music genre are you going into? And have you been recording songs already? So I am going to keep that more uh, for off the record. Okay. But but for genre, it will be more like soft pop, pop rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you, you have recorded some songs. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's all I want. I don't want everything. I don't want no title or anything. Just, I didn't even know you were going to tell me about that part, but it's pretty cool. Just a so. little inside scoop. Yeah. I have uh, I've done a little bit of the music thing. I don't sing, but mostly like the rapping and things like that. So, and I already got paid for not a lot, but I got paid for some of the yeah. streaming stuff that I did. So awesome. I was like, yeah, I did it. Yeah, now I can retire from musician. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I did it, and 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 I don't know if yeah. maybe that's something that you that you were like, man, I, I was singing, I liked it, but maybe I don't have nothing to show for it. Maybe I want to do this. Is that kind of sort of drove you to want to do it or you just still have the passion for the music? I it's just real real estate took over for right now, but you still have it in there. Yeah, I, I mean, to establish myself, I want to I wanna put my feet on a strong career and, and get to know the world. I travel a lot now that I'm in real estate, now, nice. that, now that I'm able to have more liberty and be my own boss. I'm able to dedicate time to be able to do things I love so I do still sing, but I just don't do it for the money, the gigs anymore. I work in real estate for that. And mm -hmm. I sing for a passion. You sing for a passion. And you want something concrete that you made a project for you. So, hey, I did it. I built it. Yeah? I built that. You did yeah. that. That's pretty cool. I like that. Good luck with that. I hope Thank that uh, when you're ready to put it out, if, I don't know if you're going to do a big release or everything. You're going to all the way out. But if you do, please let us know. We'll be more happy to support whatever we can. Definitely will. All righty. So thank you very much. We're running short on time. Thank you for sharing uh, everything that you, you told us so far as far as real estate. If anybody was to try to contact you, they're looking for a home, they're looking for a rental, they're looking for investment properties, uh, what is your social media? We'll put maybe not your telephone number because people are strange, but maybe just your social media. Yes, contact. my social media on Instagram and TikTok. It is at Real with Mel. And my Facebook is Melissa Ornelas, Melissa Ornelas. Yeah. And I would be love I would love to help your family, your friends to be able to come move over here to the DFW area or suburbs and just be able to take care of them like they're my own family. Awesome. And do you have any events that you have coming up? Anything like that that you're doing either yourself or with anybody else? Yes, I do have an event coming up on June twentieth. It mm -hmm. is going to be an educational event. Nice. And everyone's invited to come get to know more about the loans the process of different types of loans we have about how you can buy property outside of the U.S. And also maybe there will be some singing. Maybe there's going to, there's going to be some singing. I can almost guarantee June 20th. Be some so get onto my social media and you'll get some more information. Do you have there. a flyer already out? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yet. June 20th, mark the date, put it on your calendar, seal it. Make a calendar for yourself to remind you. Yeah. Shout outs, any shout outs that you have for anybody. Yes. Shout out to Narev Dallas. Thank y'all for supporting me. And I'm so excited to be a part of the board of directors for this year. Thank you to, to Latin Factor for inviting me today. Thank you for, to all my clients who gave me the opportunity to be able to, to establish myself to be here today. I love y'all. Yeah. Before we ended the real estate part, you yeah. actually have some awards that you have won before. Oh, yes. Not only that, but even in high school, you were president, vice president of the was student council no for for my entire choir class for your entire choir class you were president and vice president yeah i was president uh at one school vice president at the other school okay. growing up yeah and not only that even you could continue the the awards in the real estate so you yeah. won a few awards recently yes i won the executive club awards through remax okay two years in a row two years in a row time. yeah yeah and what is the requirements for you to be able to get that what do you have to have what are the the goals, the the money, whatever it is that they, that they have? Yeah, so it's, I mean, that ranges from 50 to 100K. Yeah? Yeah. And you got it back to yeah. back. Yeah. Back to back, <laughs> look at you. Okay, what is, uh, I think we talked a little bit about it, but let's just go and revisit maybe there's something else. What is an important lesson that you learned doing a real estate that you would tell your younger self that will help somebody else out? 
somebody else out? What would that be? In real estate? Yes, in real estate. Don't let them push you around and really listen to let really listen to their needs. Listen, listen, listen. That's the most important thing. Note down everything. That way you don't forget if you're forgetful, which a lot of us are if we don't write it down. So listen and if you really put your passion, your heart into it, nothing can go wrong. And if it doesn't go right, it on to the next. Don't don't stress about the past. Just focus on the next and on the future and on growing yourself and on uplifting others. Awesome. Like it a lot. This was a little deeper. Uh well it is um usually throughout the day when I wake up or some sometime during my day, I say something along the lines of not immortal. I am mortal and I will die one day. I know you're fairly young. Uh but still it's just something that happens in, in real life, right? It's gonna happen. Um but it makes me wanna hurry up, do stuff and make me keeps me productive and doing things knowing that that's a reality in life right with that i wish you a long prosperous life however when everything's said and done what do you want people to think and feel about your life about my life mm -hmm. that that i was always just trying to be optimistic and helping my family and helping everyone around me with good intentions always yeah with yeah love. and i think yeah Shout out to your dad by the way my you dad. didn't say that to your dad oh, shout your out to my dad shout out to dad mom Grandma, sister, everyone I love, you know who you are. Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, when I used, when I started the podcast three years ago, we used to I used to DM a bunch of people and try yeah. to find guests. I tapped into the people that already knew, try to make something happen, and you know a lot of them came through. But sometimes uh, guests were scarce. Sometimes uh, it was hard to find a guest, and then sometimes they'll cancel. It takes time to an, an investment to get an, ep an episode out, right? Mm -hmm. They don't get it, you know. Some people, it is what it is, and I can't blame them for it, right? But a lot of the time, to start realizing, you know what? The people who are meant to be here will be here. Absolutely. This is our second try to try to book this, but it was a year ago when your dad let me know about you, and I, I didn't realize how much. I, when he told me, I knew you were, of course, you're his daughter, right? But I didn't realize what he was telling me of the person you are, like how amazing your story is and how, how amazing it's being so young the things you're already accomplishing and are doing, you know, and then you can exercise in not only in the singing, but just overall, even in high school to striving to be more, not just a regular student. Um, the mental part of you wanting to be more and more and, uh, you know, with, with good intentions, not yeah. stepping on everybody, but still caring for other people as you're moving along, you know? Absolutely. And, I, and I think that's amazing though. So shout out to, remind me his name again, because I know. Ricardo. Ricardo. Saludos, Ricardo. Le dije, le di mi palabra que íbamos a tener a su hija aquí un día de estos. Y aquí estamos casi un año después. Disculpe la tardanza, sabe que soy mexicano también de Morelos. Así que a veces llegamos un poquito tarde, pero llegamos. Okay. So, even though it was a year later, uh, I gave him my word that we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. So, yeah. here we are, and we did it. So, yes. without a doubt, with everything you're doing, I know you're fairly young, and I know you continue to work, and I know you continue to excel. I have no doubt wherever you're at, you're going to continue to go forward because of the things that you have, because you care for others, and because now you know that uh, you're not going to be pushed around. Without mm -hmm. a doubt, Melissa, you are a global Latin factor. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you very much. This was another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast. Remember, remember to subscribe right now. Remember to subscribe to the channel so you can see more interviews, more content. We have amazing episodes in Spanish, English. We have the changing cultures. We have all kinds of amazing, beautiful stories. More to come, by the way. Uh, shout out to WSB for allowing us the space to record uh, this beautiful office and uh, the amazing people that we have here. So... Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you until next time. Bye. Thank you very much for checking out this episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast. Make sure you go and subscribe to the channel. Check out the content and the episodes that we have ready for you. Thank you very much. Till next time. Pero but in fact is a flamingo coming to Havana and we from Puerto Rico. Can you see I'm calling a guy like you should wear a warning?
It's dangerous and I'm falling There's no escape, I can't wait I need a hit, baby, get me in You're dangerous, I'm loving it Too high, can't calm down Losing my head, it's been around and round. Do you feel me now? Taste of lips, I'm on a run. You're toxic, I'm sipping on with the taste of your blood.